Hey guys, I'm Dan, one of the engineers at Mission Meadow. Today I'm going to show you how to install our indirect fit oil cooler kit for the Honda S2000. Let's check it out. All right guys, as I'm sure many of you S2000 enthusiasts know, these cars tend to run really hot. So whether you're using this car as a commuter car, just a daily driver, or taking on the track, direct fit oil cooler kit is what you need to get the performance and reliability out of your car. Our S2000 oil cooler kit comes with a 19 row oil cooler. You can get it in either silver or stealth black. It gets paired up either with our traditional sandwich plate or thermostatic sandwich plate and is direct fit for the S2000. It comes with all the bracketry needed to make a direct painless installation with no modifications. Tools needed to install the Mishimoto Direct Fit Oil Cooler Kit onto the Honda S2000 are 8mm socket, 10mm socket, 12mm socket, extension, quarter drive ratchet, 27mm socket, 3 8 drive ratchet, 3 8 drive torque wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, pop clip pliers, 10 millimeter wrench, short one inch wrench, regular one inch wrench, oil, and a funnel. Installation time is about two and a half hours and is a three out of five on the difficulty level. All right, now the first thing we're gonna have you do to kick this install off is we're gonna have you jack the car up and place it securely on jack stands. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start the process of removing the front bumper do this, the first step is going to be to remove the five Phillips head screws from the front of the bumper. So next remove the two 10 millimeter bolts on the top of the front of the bumper. So next remove the two 8 millimeter bolts that hold the corners of the bumper to the fenders, one on each side. Next, remove the six 10 millimeter bolts and three pop clips that hold the lower shrouds to the front of the bumper. All right, once you've finished removing all the hardware from the lower splash shields to hold the bumper on, don't just go right ahead to pulling the bumper off. Little tip, you're gonna have to pull down on the ends of the bumper and then pull out before you remove it. Otherwise, you risk breaking off some of the inside of the bumper. All right, next step is going to be to loosen the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the support beam to the bracket and then remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the brackets to the sides of the frame. Next step is to remove the front air dam from the front of the car. This involves removing four pop clips and four screw pop clips. Now we're ready to remove the oil filter. All right guys, next step, we're gonna remove the three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the air box to the front of the car. Then we're gonna take the air box, just lift it up and pull it out of the way. This is gonna make a little bit of room for us so we can run the oil cooler lines. Our first step in assembling the brackets to the oil cooler, take the one bracket that has the indexed mark on it, lay it on top of the cooler, and loosely fasten it with two 10 millimeter bolts and nuts.
take the bracket with the small L on it. This is going to go up on the top. And again, loosely fasten it with two 10 millimeter nuts and bolts. Okay, now take the remaining last bracket and we're gonna go ahead and install it on the bottom corner of the cooler. Next, remove the 12 millimeter bolt that holds the horn bracket onto the center of the radio support. Once you have the bracket removed, go ahead and disconnect the horn from the wire harness. Okay, once you have the horn disconnected from the car, go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter nut on the back of the horn and remove the bracket. Once you have the bracket off, you're going to go ahead and take the Mishimoto supplied bracket with the recess facing forward and connect it to the horn like so. Next, remove the 10 millimeter bolt from the bracket that holds the ambient temperature switch to the front of the car. Next, remove one 10 millimeter bolt that holds the upper radiator support to the side frame. All right, now it's time to install the pre-assembled oil cooler. Okay, once you have the oil cooler sitting in place, go ahead and reinstall that 10 millimeter bolt that holds onto the side of the frame. Okay, next reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt that goes through the ambient temperature switch bracket. Okay, next, go ahead and reinstall the horn. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go underneath the oil cooler and get the horn up here because the AC lines are in the way. Place this in front of the top oil cooler bracket and then re-screw in that 12 millimeter bolt. Once you have that back installed, go ahead and re-plug in the connection for the horn. Okay, next, take the short oil cooler line and feed it through the passenger side corner of the radiator support. This line is then going to be bolted onto the left side of the cooler. All right, next, install the longer line following the routing of the short line. Once you have the lines loosely tightened onto the cooler, go ahead and take a one inch wrench and let's snug them down. Now remember, these don't have to be super tight. They're designed using a flared seal. Next step is gonna be to reinstall the plastic air duct. Okay, next reinstall the four pop clips to the front part of the scoop. Okay, next reinstall the four screw style pop clips to the top of the air dam. Next, reinstall the support beam. There's eight 10 millimeter bolts. Four on each side, two on the top, two on the side. Okay, before we put the sandwich plate on, we're gonna go ahead and thread the two straight fittings into the front face. Okay. 
Once they're both threaded in, we're going to go ahead and tighten them down with a one inch wrench. Next, take a little bit of oil, just rub it around that o-ring. This will make sure we get a good seal. Once you have that on, go ahead and take the sandwich plate, fit it up onto the block, and then using your adapter, thread it on. Next, take the long line and go ahead and thread it on to the furthest away straight fitting. Next, take the fitting for the short line and thread that on to the other straight fitting. Okay, once you have the sandwich plate and lines looking similar to what we have here, go ahead and take a short one inch wrench and tighten down those lines. Okay, once you have the lines tightened to the sandwich plate, take a 27 millimeter socket and a torque wrench and go ahead and torque the sandwich plate center bolt down to 40 foot pounds. Next, reinstall the oil filter. Okay, now that we're done working on the sandwich plate, we're gonna go ahead and move the air box back into its location. Now it's time to reinstall the front bumper. Reinstall these six 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fender pan liners to the front of the bumper and three pop clips that hold the lower shrouds to the front of the bumper. Next, reinstall the two 8mm bolts that hold the corner of the bumper to the fender. Note there's one on each side. Install the two 10mm bolts on the top of the front of the bumper. Next, reinstall the five Phillips head screws that hold the front of the bumper to the crash beam. Okay, now that we have our oil cooler installed, we're gonna go ahead and start this up, check for leaks. Now that we've checked and made sure that there's no leaks, we're gonna go ahead and check the oil level. Now, being that we installed this 19 row cooler, it's gonna take about a little more than a half a quart extra oil. Okay, that concludes the install. Take a car out for a ride, and enjoy your new Mishimoto products.